All right, quick little milling machine project today. I have uh, I've not fired up the little Atlas mill for quite a while, and I don't know that I've shown a whole lot of it running, but I thought I'd take you guys along. What we are doing is some T-nuts, and we're starting off with some T-nuts for the planer. And what I want is I've got six blanks cut. I'm going to um, run them off here for uh, the 5.8 socket head cap screws that go in the fence on the planer. So I thought rather than milling these out with a milling cutter on a vertical mill, I would go ahead and fire up the lattice mill. Now I picked up a couple of uh, couple of cutters, and these are eBay purchases, and I'll show you in a little bit closer. But we've got them in and shimmed out to the correct spacing for our T-nuts, and we've got a blank set up here. And we'll just let this run. But what I found was interesting is since I haven't run this mill for a while, and this mill's going to get some work done to it anyway because I need to build some patterns off of some of the parts here. We've got some got some parts that I need to be casting up. So I'll be doing at least partial disassembly on this mill from time to time. And, and while I've got it apart, I'm going to do little adjustments to it. But uh, I went to fire it up today, and as I'm lubing everything up and looking at belts, I'm thinking, boy, that belt looks kind of ragged. And I thought, maybe we can make it through this job. Well, we couldn't make it through this job. It ran about five minutes and self-destructed itself. So we tracked down a new belt. And I thought you might just find it interesting. This is a 3L270. And this is the only machine that has a 3L series belt on it, as far as I know, in the entire shop. On all of the equipment I've got, this is the only thing that has a 3L, which I believe is an A size. I think everything else is B size, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, I'd originally picked up a, a 4L. 270 belt for it or 27 inch belt and we had to go and do a little exchange a few minutes ago because this was a 3L and this is the belt from the uh, motor to the counter shaft so I'm not going to get too involved showing that to you I do have it already installed and we've already tensioned it and everything I've got the mill settled with cockeyed so I could get back to it one of the other things that I did find interesting though is this machine has early style belt guards on it and the later mills have quite a bit bigger belt guard on them the side guard is a two-piece guard. The top cover is quite a bit bigger than this one is and um, comes down and covers the, the top pulley on the outboard end. So the, so the side cover is actually a split guard or, you, you know, you've only got the bottom half of that is what the guard is and it hinges out on the, on the later model machines. This is the way this machine came and this is the way it was mounted on the side is there's a, a piece that's got a, you know, hole in it and it's riveted on there. And, I'm assuming this was a machined out piece from looking at it. It was just another piece of aluminum. Now this is an aluminum guard. And just recently I saw pictures of what I believe to be this guard in cast iron, but it's a little bit different. The boss is included as part of the casting um, to mount it on the side. So it still has this style mounting, but the boss is integral and it was cast in with the, with the guard. So I don't know what the uh, evolution of it was, whether this is an earlier one that was just cast in aluminum, whether this is an, a later one that was just cast in aluminum, whether it was cast this way or whether it originally had the boss on it and it was broken off or whatever the case may be. Um, the guard itself doesn't really look like it had been broken off and then smoothed out and a piece put on, although that's possible. If they did, they did a pretty good job of it. Um, anyway, just found that a little bit interesting. So I'm going to go ahead get this reinstalled and... Um, get the machine back in position and I'm probably just going to run a time lapse. All I'm doing is just a, a gang cut. I'm going to do several steps going down. I'm not going to try and take the I'm not going to try and take that whole area all at once. So here's my setup. All I've done is taken a 3 T nut that I already had. We've got it back in here and I just took a plate that was drilled for 3 of an inch. Now this is for a different fixture. Um, actually for on the shaper but um, it accepts that 3 8 bolt. I squared this edge up to the table, and I've got a smaller T-nut in here, same size T-nut, but it's threaded uh, 5 16 And what I did is I've taken my blocks, my blanks, drilled them in the center, which may not come out exactly in the center because of the, just of the way they sit. I may have to go back and actually bore the hole before I open them up, but that allows me to put a 5 16 bolt through. Go ahead and run it into this T-nut, and then square it up against the my fence here on the back side created by the other block and t-nut that I've got in here. So then I can go ahead and just tighten this down. Now I looked at several different ways of fixturing it. I could have put a vise on here, although 
the vices I have that are kind of appropriate for this are for the shaper and um, I decided it was best to just clamp it down to the table so I was kind of struggling with how to best do that and uh, this is what I came up with I've already cut the first one and uh, it seems to work really well I can run it under power feed I'm taking smaller cuts because that way I can run it under power feed the, the smallest cuts that I can get are, uh, are you know to go full full depth why we'd be feeding too aggressively and this little machine wouldn't take it so there's some adjustments to be made here um, like I say I'll be working this machine quite a bit more here as we go along but um, and I already see some changes that I'm going to make to it these two cutters are a pair of cutters that I bought off of our favorite auction site um, good deal and they're virtually unused one of them may be used a little bit and I'm getting some rattling going across as it uh, as it's wanting to cut so I'm not sure exactly what uh, if that's run out in the machine anyway that's the setup I've got it seems to be holding up fine to them and everything um, I have already pulled off the the uh, digital readout scale on the front of the table just because I wanted to adjust the Gibbs I tightened them up a little bit more Well, we've got this second one cut here. Let's pull it off and take a look at it and see what we've ended up with. Which I think we've ended up with something that's going to be just fine. I've already deburred the first one. A couple of observations. I believe the uh, this arbor may be a little bit out of round. I'm getting kind of an eccentric movement out of it. And I've adjusted the gibbs up a little bit tighter for the x-axis here um, and that's helped the finish a little bit but there's right off the machine that's what we've come up with and I notice our holes are a little bit off center the first one was too maybe that t-nuts drilled a little bit off center but um, I measured out the first one and I've deburred this one um, we've got it's squared up and everything so I'll have to take these and go back and either bore them in the mail or I may set them up in the forge I'll chuck on the lathe and bore them that way and then tap them but that's the way they come off and um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the other three. So uh, all in all, this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good setup to produce T nuts. I did a spacer specifically for the the distance I wanted in between. Actually, I've got two spacers in there, um, and I'll probably do that for the other T nuts that I'm going to build. I'm going to build some more T nuts for the uh, the Atlas machines, both on the on the mill and on the shaper, and we'll build some more T nuts for them which those are both the same ones, but I'm going to do them in different sizes. I'm going to do a, a variety of from quarter, five sixteenths and three eighths. Three eighths is a little bit large for in here. It just barely fits and it tends to, to um, spread the T-nuts a little bit because the threads are right on the edge of this, this upper surface here. So uh, I'll build um, adapters for that um, or build spacers accordingly for that. But all in all, that's going to make a real nice T-nut. Like I say, we'll have to... Uh, drill and tap them and these are going to be I believe they're 5 8 uh, 5 8 24 I think um, but we'll go ahead hand deburr the edges and uh, once we get them done why we'll throw them in and tumble them just like we did the the last batch of tea nuts and then we'll throw them in the boiling tank so then those will be dedicated to the uh, planer so yeah I'm happy with those those come out nice all uh, and they fit in the in the tea slots just fine so I'll go back and uh, get the other four cut, and then we'll see about drilling and tapping them. All right, well, we're getting all the machining finished up on these little T-nuts here today, and I thought I'd give you a quick update, give you the give you the setup. Here's the finished T-nuts. They're 5 8 11 is what they're tapped. I'll grab the bolt here. These are the socket head cap screws that hold them down into position, and uh, we've got them here. Now... I've got uh, half of these done. I've got the, the fourth one set up in the mill, and then I've got two more that I'm machining in the little atlas mill. So I thread in. Um, 5 8 11 just barely fits in those T-slots. You see them starting to, threads starting to peek through on the sides. And with the exception of K-1, 
countersinking the bottoms of them and then deburring them, which I'll, part of that I'll do on the belt sander and then I'll touch them up by hand while they're ready to be thrown in the tumbler and tumble them once I get them this far. So I thought I'd give you the setup real quick. Uh, we've gone ahead and machined the profile. I'm doing them on the, on the vertical mill. I thought about setting them up in the lathe and the reason I ended up doing them in the mill is I can do two things at once. I've got the little atlas uh, horizontal mill machining the last two and about the time I finish one cut, uh, one depth cut on the Atlas mill, why I finished up one step or one process on the on the little grizzly here, so I can actually have two things going at once and not be wasting too much time. So uh, when we time lapse through, you'll be able to see both machines running because I'm I'm operating both machines at once. So what I've done, let me bring this down here so we can see the uh, see the vice on these. What I've ended up and done is we set them up here with a stop. I'm taking an edge finder and I'm actually indicating off both sides of the of the step down on them just because I want them as centered up as I can get them because there's so little clearance on the sides anyway. Like I say, those threads are starting to peek through a little bit. So I'm zeroing on the sides. We've got our length set and um, we're just doing that with an edge finder. Then I'm going back and rather than setting up the boring head, why I'm just taking a half inch um, two flute end mill. Four flute would be better. Two flute's what I've got here and handy so I'm using it to bore my hole on through. The reason I'm doing this is I can run everything in a half inch collet rather than swapping back and forth between um, drill chuck, you know, different size end mill, boring head which is on an R8 collet, that type of thing. So once I've indicated on center I'm taking my half inch um, two flute end mill, ball end mill and we're just boring all the way through. Uh, from there I'm going back with a tap size drill with a half inch shank on it and drilling all the way through. Then I'm taking, I just picked a random bigger drill bit and uh, I'm just chamfering that top edge. Then I'm going back and manually starting my tap hole to get it threaded and I can use this right in the call with an index head on it and manually turn that in by, head, by hand. Once I get that going good while well, I've got a um, Another tap that I've got set up in a tap handle that somebody shortened up as a as a uh, bottoming tap, basically. I, before I got it, it was a used tap, apparently. And uh, then I'm going to finish tapping through that because it's a little bit sharper tap. I've taken all six of my little pieces. We have D-nut profiles. We are drilled and tapped. We are counterboard on the bottom. And we've got all six of them. Two, four, and six. And what I'm going to do with these is just take them over, drop them in the tumbler, and start it tumbling and let them actually probably tumble until tomorrow. And uh, then we'll pull them out and double check them, and then they're ready to they're ready to be blued. Then it's it's cold. I'm not going to blue, you know, for the next week or two probably. So I'll probably tumble these, and if I need them, I'll use them. And then when I get ready to blue, well, I'll tumble them again just to get off any surface rust there. After I take them out of the tumbler, well, I'll oil them up because I know I'm not going to blue quite yet. Um, but they will be ready to go. I think while I've got the Atlas set up, a little Atlas mill. I think I'll go ahead. Well, we need to make some for the Grizzly here, and we'll probably make a few for the Atlas. I'm gonna. I want to add a little more versatility with my T nuts. Um, for the Grizzly, the primary ones are probably going to be for a half inch bolt. Although I think I'll probably go ahead and set some up for at least three eighths and and possibly some quarters, um, just because I want the versatility to take virtually any clamp I've got for any machine and use it on any of the other machines. You know, the the um, the Atlas stuff is pretty much universal. They've got a, a universal T-slot in all of their stuff. Uh, the Grizzly here is a little bit bigger.
Well, it's only been a couple hours, I guess, that we've had this tumbling, but thought we'd take a look at it and see what they look like anyway. These. And I'll tumble these a little bit longer. But, uh, yeah, I've still got quite a bit of scale on them. But the edges are uh, at least not sharp. And, yeah, we'll uh, tumble these for oh, three or four hours tomorrow, probably. We'll finish cleaning the, the mill scale off of the ends and things like that. On the top there a little bit. A little bit on the bottom but uh, let's see if we can grab a couple more out of here just to see how consistent they are yeah they'll take a, a fair amount of, of tumbling still there's three of them out of the six that we had So I'm going to throw these back in the tumbler and I'll start them again tomorrow, but this is three of them, the way they look. They'll, uh, once they're tumbled a while longer, why that'll, uh, that'll clean them up pretty nicely. But yeah, 5 8 11 is what they're tapped and that's just on the verge of being too big for these, uh, for these T-nuts. You know, we've got them peeking out the, peeking out the side on the top section there, which they'll work fine for. For what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and start using these the way they are and then when I get ready to blue I'll uh, either hit them with a sandblaster or go back and tumble them for a, you know, an hour or so. We'll take off whatever oxidization and rust and whatever else is on there. I would imagine it won't be too long before I'm bluing again but um, right now we I thought spring was here but we're you know we've still got six inches of snow again since the over the last few days. So anyway, we've got six completed T-nuts, which is what we wanted for the uh, for the um, fence on the planer, and uh, that'll make that complete. So anyway, these will go back in there. They can beat themselves up in the in the tumbler some more tomorrow, and we'll call it good. And hopefully, you found this a little bit interesting. And if you didn't have it already, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. If you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. And any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. And as always, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch.